The words Chevrolet Camaro. What comes to mind when you hear them? If you ask 100 different people, you're gonna get 100 different answers. For me, I think American legend from the supercharged Camaro ZL1 to the track-focused 1LE and even the F-Body, which is just legendary junk. And that's why today we find ourselves here at Insurance Auto Auctions in Dallas, Texas to buy as many Camaros as we possibly can. Again, not the F-Body. That one's definitely staying. This is the one. The best Camaro ever made, in my opinion, at least. I suppose you can make an argument for the 5th Gen Z28, but a big spoiler, huge tires all the way around, and of course that blower under the hood, which we'll get to later. This one gets my vote, and it just so happens we have one on the channel not too long ago. Uh, that part's kind of a letdown. I do wish it was manual, but hey, I'm not gonna complain. Actually, I'm definitely gonna complain. This would be a way cooler car if it was manual. Salvage auction beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. So let's see what's going on with this. The interior looks really clean, though I suppose you would suspect that from a newer car like this. Obviously, we have a driver's blown airbag there. The seat belt not functioning properly, that's for sure. We haven't got around to the rear of it yet, but I suppose we can use context clues and assume the rear bumper's no good. While pretty much all the 6th Gen 1LE interiors are essentially the same, even the non-1LEs, this car here has that beautiful carbon dash panel, which is a super expensive option. The last one of these guys that came through the salvage yard, if I recall correctly, we sold for like seven or eight hundred dollars. It's insanity. We have ourselves a passenger curtain bag blown, a passenger seat bag blown. And now for the, I suppose I'll call it the worst part, because truly none of this looks that bad. A general rule of thumb, and I do mean very general because there are exceptions to this. If you see a body shop started to fix a car, there's at least a good chance that it wasn't a horrendous total and you're gonna have a pretty easy fix. Even the inner quarter panel there, that's an easy fix. You could pull that out and put a skin on it, no problem. On a completely different note, if you've ever wondered where the batteries are on these cars, there you go. It's still pretty crazy to me that you have to cut the quarter panel off to get to them, but hey, I'm not an engineer. Obviously, if you were to put a skin on this, it would not be just a section of a skin. You'd need the whole ordeal. The trunk app is all kinds of jacked up, but I do think that's just the skin being moved around. As for that rear suspension back there, to the naked eye, it does look like that wheel's just a little off. Not as off as the front one, which is a little more clear. I think we can all agree on that. As far as the damage goes up here, you have a fender, no big deal there, dirt cheap. The ZL1 front bumper assembly, that is a little bit of money, so that's gonna cost you 1,500 bucks or so. We got majorly lucky over here. This headlight is 100% intact. Those are not cheap either, so that's definitely a bonus. Not so much over here on the passenger side. That one's missing. If it is in the car by some chance, it is gonna be damaged. Now for where things can go south on this car pretty quick. The front bumper beam, that's probably usable, though you'd have to repair it over there. It's probably gonna be more cost effective just to buy one. The front coolers, at least in the center and on the driver's side, they look pretty good. That lower one's one that tends to get damaged very often in these, and it looks, to the best of my knowledge, like it's intact. What it's all gonna boil down to on this car is if this front damage here got into the frame rail or it's just core support damage like I think may be the case. This guy right here is just a bolt-on mount, so that's an easy piece to replace. This car, I would assume, has some other damage hiding under here though. Let's see. I can't get a great look at it with the fuse box right there, but to the best of my judgment, that frame rail looks straight. I don't see that it's touched in any way, shape, or form. I did say it was gonna come down to whether that damage is isolated to the upper core support there or the frame rails. But I think after looking at it, the answer is it's neither of them. It looks like the body damage is isolated to the front bumper beam in this bolt-on headlight slash fender bracket. There is the more obvious stuff like that radiator there. These 1LEs have coolers everywhere, if you can't tell. I would likely assume that this car also has suspension damage. So just to be safe, why don't we go ahead and count on replacing all that front suspension, which if you look through there, you can see those coilovers. They're pretty special and yes, they're stock. Typically when I see a ZL1 like this with the 6.2 liter supercharged LT4 in it, my mouth is watering, and that's putting it lightly. I'm always super hyped to buy them, rip the drivetrain out, and sell it to some guy to put it into his 60s car. But as far as this one goes, there is pretty much a 0% chance that happens. This thing is a ridiculous 
ridiculously easy fix. This one's one of, if not the best fixer candidate ZL11LE that I've seen at auction, period. The entire driver's side of the body is in mint condition. I do mean mint. It's a little dirty, but I don't see a dent. I don't see a scratch. It's very, very nice. All the key parts that make the 1LE a 1LE, they're intact. This carbon spoiler, that's very obviously not cheap. I probably don't need to tell you guys that. Fortunately for whoever ends up with this thing, it's perfectly fine. You have the ZL1 hood, which does have a carbon fiber insert, heat extractor, whatever you want to call it as well. The only parts on this car that are actually expensive and ZL1 specific that you're going to have to replace, that whole front bumper assembly, possibly that one strut. A wheel if you happen to need one of those and some lower rear bumper components, assuming they're not in the car. This is 100% a phenomenal car. The only problem we have with it is it means it's gonna be super expensive. Off the top of my head, if I have to guess what this is ultimately gonna sell for, I'm gonna go roughly 35 grand. If someone else gets out here and looks at this in person and realizes how easy of a fix it is, I wouldn't be shocked whatsoever to see it go closer to 40. I recognize that color. That's one of the cars that I came here looking for. This guy here, this is the other one LE. That's what we'll call it. Not supercharged, not as expensive, and unfortunately not as easy of a fix. This one's a 2023 SS 1LE. While it doesn't have the big carbon fiber wing and it doesn't have a blower, it makes a little less power. As for cars you can buy today new, it's probably one of the best off the shelf track cars. But that's about all the good I can give you on this car because this thing got railed. I mean it. This is not a light wreck. I haven't figured out exactly what happened here yet, but we're well on our way. Let's start with the not so bad. Rear left suspension, it's kinked under, so I assume it may have spun and hit something. You're scraped up at the bottom all the way down the driver's door. It got the rocker panel. It got the quarter even. It bent it in there a little bit, though you definitely can fix that. That's not a horrendous deal. Even the roof on this thing is just buckled, smashed. I can't tell if it was actually on the roof. There's no scrape marks at all. There is a little more good. The rear end of this car, it's in pretty good shape. It has an aftermarket mandrel bent racing products exhaust system. It probably sounds awesome, though I know we're not going to be able to start it. The rear bumper, the taillights, this spoiler, everything back here is just in great shape. On the passenger side, that wheel is also kinked in. But regardless, we don't need to pay too much attention to it because I think the much bigger deal to this car is right up here. It does appear the brake caliper survived in there. So if you're buying this for parts, which is why we would be buying it, that's some value there. That wheel is impressively destroyed. This one is just completely ripped off and it does have some scrapes, but it's not blown apart like that one was. Down inside the wheelhouse where that came from, it's more of the same, just really bad condition. Though again, if I have to pick a positive, there's no visible frame damage here. You can see where the tire went back into that panel right there. The subframe, that shot. Obviously, we already know the control arms got broken off. Our sway bar in link there has dismounted itself in not in the proper fashion. I did say I didn't see any frame damage in there, and you might be thinking I'm ignoring this. The front, say, nine inches of this is actually bolt on. It makes them really easy to fix, and it's one of the coolest things Chevy did on this car. But I do have a feeling that once we get over here to the passenger side, it's not going to be nearly as good of a story. Right there, that's the section of the frame rail that bolts on, but even up past that, you can see the main frame rail portion is swayed that way. And judging by how hard of a hit this is, and the fact that the roof's buckle with out being on its lid, I have to imagine that frame rail got hit bad. The front bumper, which now resides on the windshield, is absolutely toasted. The fender, that upper frame section, wow, look at that. That is really kinked up. That is almost impressive. You guys see the kind of junk that I rebuild on the channel, but I feel like a person with good sense would pretty much rule this a parts car. Unfortunately, not just because the wheels on it, they actually have the hood tied shut. I don't know if they were worried about it flying up on the trailer, on the tow truck. So we're just gonna have to take this for what it's worth pretty much. Once in a while, there's a car at auction that piques my interest and I'm genuinely curious how it ended up like this. I would love to know the story of this wreck. Pause of the wreck aside, I'm definitely interested to watch this one at auction and see what it ultimately sells for. If I had to put a price on it at this very moment, 17. And yes, that is definitely just a wild guess. Generally, it's kind of rare to find one 6th gen ZL1 at a lot, but to find two at the same lot and they're both somewhat easily fixable, at least off first impressions, is incredibly rare. From this angle over here, it looks like a fully complete car. I can't yet understand why this is here, but let's see. They don't show up here for curved wheels. We all know that. The front bumper is hanging off the fender liners down but there's nothing catastrophic there the rear 
A little more than curbing. I guess it hits something pretty hard. It's kinked in a little bit if you can't pick it up on camera. The rear quarter panel, that's just paint damage. It's not even dented. Right here on the back side is the worst of it. It's ground down pretty good, but just like this bumper, it's not actually broken. The back of the car, where I truly expected to see at least some type of damage, also perfect. I am a little mystified at this one. I think this is one of those cars that I see at auction once in a while, typically online and not in person, that just looks too good to be true. This is every bit of a $60,000 car. They're not going to total it for nothing. That's a little weird. Typically, this isn't a hit that would make me think it blew the bags. Driver curtain, driver seat, the passenger curtain's blown as well. This is still a very odd car in my opinion. It does have power, but what is... That's interesting. That doesn't look like a note from auction. The only thing I'm thinking after seeing that is this car has some major underbody damage. Let's see if this is gonna tell us anything and sure enough, it is not. It looks good. Every single person who's ever rebuilt a car loves to find themselves an easy fix. But to me personally, the only thing scarier than having a rough fix is buying a car when you don't know exactly what's wrong with it. On the rough stuff, even if it's as bad as that demon I bought, at least I know what I'm getting into. Spending $30,000, $40,000 on a car like this, which is surely what it's going to go for because it looks so good, without knowing what you're actually buying, that's hard for me. It really is. As much as I want to say that this is an easy fix and you should buy it and get yourself a ZL1 on the cheap, I just can't. For me, this ZL1 is just going to have to stay a mystery. And here she is, the first 5th gen Camaro that I actually wanted to buy, other than the ZL1, but we won't talk about that, the SS1LE. This was the ultimate track weapon when it came out as far as Camaros go, and it's still a phenomenal value today, especially if you can find one like this that needs a little work at salvage auction. Then when you go out and smack it into a tire wall, you don't have to worry about it. It's already been totaled once, what's one more time? One of the cool things about this car, if you look in there, you see that valve on the exhaust, NPP buy mode. They're pretty valuable, not to mention they sound awesome. The red brake calipers, one of the big deals on this. They just look cool. They don't do anything different. They're not any bigger, but it was a nice touch, I suppose. The ZL1 style wheels. These pull a ton of money, but I don't think that's what we have to worry about on this car. This one, to me, at least for right now, seems like a fixer. And coming around to the front, it seems like it's actually going to be a pretty easy fix. I, never mind. There's some damage back here on the quarter panel. Let's get to it. Okay. So it's gonna need a quarter panel. I don't think you're fixing that one, but the good news is it looks like outer skin only. Best I can tell, there's no inner structure damage. It wasn't a hard hit this way. It looks like something just caught it and ripped it. Because of that, the door gap is absolutely horrendous, but once again, I think it's only the outer skin. As is the case with all 1LEs, it's a manual transmission car. It does have the Alcantara shift knob and boot, though these never hold up well. One thing this car is lacking is the Recaro seats. Not a lot of people wanted to pay for those when they were ordering a fifth gen, but the people who did are surely happy about it now because they're worth a ton of money. Before we head under that hood, the rest of the interior, though it's pretty dusty, looks really good. I would be happy with this if this showed up from auction. The car has 106,000 miles, not unreasonable by any means. Oh, check that out. So this is a Z28 style, or it may actually be a Z28 intake. Check it out. Yeah, Z28 intake right there. I can't say that I've ever seen one of those on a non-Z28 Camaro. For those that don't know, the Z28 5th Gen was the baddest track car out there. It took the 1LE and did bad things to it. Very, very cool touch. We have a Elite Engineering catch can. We don't have a lot else, and that's perfectly fine on a car like this. No long tube headers. It did have the stock mufflers, as you're aware. This is really cool, and that's another odd thing. I don't know whose autograph that is. Let's do this. The first person that can go down in the comments and ID that signature, I'm gonna send you a merch box. As for the front end damage on this beauty, Fender dime a dozen, the HID black housing headlights, about 600 bucks for the pair, and yes, you will need both of them. Still not the worst thing in the world. The front frame rails, they are super straight. You have minor damage to the front bumper beam. You can replace it. You don't have to replace it. Not that big of a deal. The driver's wheels both look intact, though you got a flat up here. Bring the fix a flat if you buy this car from auction and want to drive it home. As for suspension damage, everything looks straight. I think this was a super light front end wreck. If you look at the lower subframe down there, 
that lower bar that sticks off the front, which is one piece with the subframe, that's something that gets damaged very commonly. That's not even damaged. A little curb damage on the passenger wheel there. It looks like you might have some suspension damage there as well. Yeah, if you look at that lower control arm, that's bent pretty good. Coming back to the rear, there's not a lot going on. A quarter skin, some easy front end work. You have yourself a beautiful track car. Trust me, it takes a lot for me to say one of these should be fixed instead of parted out. There's a lot of special stuff in this that pulls a ton of money. On this car, I'm going to begrudgingly deny my opportunity at that $1,500, 391 ratio rear differential and say that one of you guys should buy it and fix it. Don't get used to me being sentimental about Camaros. Let's all collectively say it. Three, two, one one ouch six gen z01 not z01 and any longer wow our whole usual bit where we have to decide if it's a parts car or a fixer we're not going to do that on this one for very obvious reasons this thing it got it from the front it got it from the side it really got double teamed here we can't even go inside it if we want to but let's check the back out okay the back's good, small details. Over on the passenger side, more suspension, brakes. What it all comes down to in this car, without question, is the engine. Well, it's still there, and that's a start. It's a start. The belt is no longer on the pulley. You can see right there, that radiator got pushed back into the engine. And as far as I'm concerned, there's two types of radiator to engine collisions. Number one, the radiator's pushed back. It hits the accessory drive. There's some fan interference. You can pull it all off. You can get the radiator out, throw a belt on it, and crank it up. Number two, the car got hit so hard that whatever this thing hit actually contacted the engine, smashed it, and the radiator's just there for support. And yes, this car needs all the support it can get. This is definitely a number two situation. You can see the front bumper beam. Wow. If this was an LS, I could give you a little bit more accurate representation of what damage this engine might have. I can't quite say exactly how bad an LT4 is going to hold up in an accident like this, but what I do know is this is definitely not pull the radiator off the front, put a belt on it, and send it back down the road. I know it just seems like we wrote this car off, but as a lover of junk, there's still redeeming qualities. Though we can't get inside, I'm sure there's some good interior. The supercharger, at least as far as that goes on the engine, that's going to be perfectly fine. The hit was lower than that. The front of the engine and the accessory drive stopped it. LT4 blowers worth a few bucks. You have all those rear end body panels. There's definitely money to be had here, but chances are somebody's going to pay too much for this. They're going to buy it hoping for the best. And when you buy hoping for the best, especially if you pay hoping for the best prices, doesn't work out. It almost always doesn't work out. We don't do that. I find it very unlikely that we buy this car. What this car should go for, five to seven thousand dollars what it'll probably go for 12 to 15. you guys happen to remember a few minutes ago when we saw that other ss1 le the really bad one that was a really cool color but it was probably not getting fixed yeah this one here is the complete opposite of that this one's honestly pretty bland it's white it does have the matte black 1le hood option but otherwise this one is a 10 out of 10 easier fix in the inside still very clean almost all these cars at this point are so clean being that this is another 2023 people really haven't had a chance to screw them up yet alcantara steering wheel and shift knob of course one le specific i do like that seats that look like this might not be what comes to mind when you think recaro but it does have a set of recaro seats and i have sat in them i have driven a car with them they're actually pretty great other than being clean both curtain bags blown and the passenger seat bag over there is blown so you do have a little bit to attend to in there but once you pop those bags in you're going to have yourself a beautiful interior as for the driver's side of the car pretty good really good in fact Driver's side looks A-OK. -okay. The front bumper, it's cracked up. It's not in the best shape, but it's surely not ripped off and damaged. The front passenger wheel in this car is worlds better than the last one we saw, but it's still going to need to be replaced. The passenger fender, it's good till you get there. And that right there, I believe, is the trouble area on this car. You can see, I think it hopped something. It bashed that floorboard in really good. Oh, yeah. So that's not an easy fix if you want to do things the right way. There are debatable ways to fix that. Maybe you're okay with that, maybe you're not. Being that we never do shady things on this channel, I'm not going to elaborate over the people that would seal that up, stick a side skirt over it, and keep it for their own. Real hacks, you know the type. Quick disclaimer, if you do that and actually sell a car, you are a hack and you shouldn't do it. Another Mandrel Bent Racing Products exhaust. That must be a thing down here. I did see the TRC sticker, and for a second I thought it was our guys over there at that racing channel, but I guess it's Texas Racing Concepts. Now, we only have one other place to check out on this car. There it is, LT1. Not my favorite engine. Ooh, check that out. 
E85 kit. Maybe this thing was making some power. Rotofab intake on it. It looks like this thing's actually nicely modded. Does it have headers? Yes, it does. 13,000 miles on the car. Fairly light wreck, though. Say what you will about that down there. I think this is a really nice one to fix. If you're looking for a 6th gen track car and can't afford a ZL1, this is probably the go-to. That said, I don't know the market on those at all. 25 grand? 25 grand sounds fair to me. I would actually say that to date, Lisi Parts has parted out more 5th gen Camaros than anything else. That's because the bodies, they're pretty much throwaways. But this right here, number one selling power plant at the salvage yard, and I'm not going to stop buying them anytime soon. This particular car is automatic, which isn't the best thing in the world. That means while this is a 6.2 liter aluminum LS, it's technically an L99. The manual car's got the true LS3s and the auto's got the L99. Still an awesome engine, but it has this pesky feature called displacement on demand. That means at highway cruising, they snatch four cylinders away from you, and this becomes effectively a Honda Civic. You can very easily get rid of that with about 1500 bucks in work. You change the lifters, you change a couple other things, the front cover that goes behind the crank pulley, the valley cover under the intake manifold and while you're in there you'll probably just do a cam after that other than i believe a compression ratio difference though don't quote me on that they're the same as an ls3 the manual dropouts generally pull about twenty five hundred dollars more than the autos but the autos do sell really well particularly to classic car guys now of the lower end fifth gens i think this is a cool one to show you because if you can't tell it's a 45th anniversary that means the stitching there and that's actually really cool i'll give it to chevy they knocked it out of the park on that red white and blue stitching the somebody cut the 45th logo out of the driver's seat. Alrighty then. One of the other cool parts of it, the stitching on the steering wheel, also red, white, and blue. The door panel trim, though it doesn't look that cool in video, the dash trim, it's white. It's actually really nice looking. And that's all the compliment you're getting out of me on a fifth gen Camaro. But let's go ahead and look at the damage here. You see that frame rail, it's knocked over, the car's done, period. You're rarely ever gonna hear me write off a car that quickly, but when it's a throwaway car, like a Camaro, the chassis are a dime a dozen. If it has frame rail damage, just get a new chassis. There's surely gonna be people that don't agree with what I just said, but I've been in this market a long time. Somebody's buying this car to part out. The car doesn't have any mileage listed. It doesn't have any power. Even without knowing that though, this car is going between 6,500 bucks and eight grand. There's a really narrow range for these cars and you can pretty much buy them about the same price every time. Yep, we're back again. I figured it was only right to walk past this guy one more time on the way out and say goodbye. We saw a ton of awesome Camaros today and I'm fully confident we're gonna be able to take a few of them home with us. Now we just have to sit around for a couple weeks, wait for the auction and ship them back east. Before now we're stuck waiting so until then remember never Nissan Juke and I will see you guys back soon.